Hello and welcome to Long Beach Lens. I am your host, Derek J. Simpson, Executive Director of the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Our first guest on this show is someone who I have great respect for in our community for all that she does, and I consider her a friend as well, and that's Miss Tasha Hunter. Hi, Tasha. Hi, thank you for having me. So we have you on this show for several reasons. One, because of the work that I know that you do in the community, and then secondly, uh, because of a particular event that was very special in Long Beach uh, back a couple of months ago that I want you to share more about because you were really involved with that. But let's first introduce uh, who Tasha Hunter is, and uh, I know you're a mom, but you're also doing work with Long Beach City College now. Yeah. Can you share a little bit about your impact on the students there? Well, coming from the class, oh, thank you for having me sure. again. Um, Long Beach City College, I do outreach and recruitment, particularly to our Promise Pathway students, mm -hmm. students that are in Long Beach Unified mm -hmm. and the Lakewood um, high schools, mm -hmm. just letting them know that come straight to college mm -hmm. directly after graduating high school um, and we offer some great incentives for semester free of charge and mm -hmm. we just had a huge event successful event yesterday we had about 800 wow. attendees um, just a welcome day wow. and so yeah I'm doing a lot of good work with Long Beach City College and it's great because I taught in Long Beach Unified and to see a bunch of those students now coming through uh -huh. those college doors is exciting must be fulfilling to think that in some ways your fingerprints are on them in terms of yes. their success stories. It is, it is. Yeah. Yes. Now I know you also have sons. Yes. And uh, I, I bring that up because the first time that we had you on a production here uh, at Padnet was when we were talking about just the uh, young black men in our community being at risk. And uh, back then I think it was maybe Trayvon Martin yes. and uh, other things that were going on. Uh, as a mom of sons, uh, has your perspective changed at all about what you're seeing, or do you find yourself being even more anxious about your sons growing up? That's a good question. Um, I'm a little bit more anxious now, and yeah. the way I raise them has had to shift and mm -hmm. intensify a lot more. And mm -hmm. my um, soon-to-be 11-year-old in two weeks, he's starting middle school. He wants right. to walk to school. Yeah. And of course, we want our children to have that freedom, but the what ifs and what if this and what if that. So I'm letting them know it's not that I don't trust you, right. it's just that the elements around that. So we're just, you know, teaching them to, I'm teaching them to make everything purposeful, walk with purpose, mm -hmm. um, be conscious of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. I've even changed his black cell phone case to a colorful one mm -hmm. just because. And it's a shame, but yeah. it's the reality, and we're teaching yeah. through it. That attention to detail got, uh, I'm sure, the attention of leaders in our community for a particular event that was very special, talking about having purpose, where uh, we actually shut down a major thoroughfare uh, from Atlantic and Wardlow all the way up to uh, Houghton Park. And that was something you were really involved with. We have a video that we want to show about that, but can you give us just a quick 10 second what is that event all about? What was the theme of it? Well, the Uptown Beach Streets event was our version, our Long Beach version of Ciclavia. Ciclavia is um, historic throughout the world. It started in Bogota, Colombia, and there was an event in Los Angeles, South Los Angeles, not too long ago. You said 10 seconds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we shut down the streets so that police officers and community members got to interact with each other. Okay. Well, we're going to show everyone some of the excitement that happened that day. I actually came out and we even interviewed you that day. So let's watch that video and then we'll come back and share some more thoughts. Perfect. Beach Streets Long Beach, a unique event. Though it's got names around the world as Ciclovia, in Long Beach, it's called Beach Streets, and we've activated communities from Houghton Park to Wardlow Road, Atlantic Avenue was shut down, and the community has come out to celebrate. Uh, it's a great, great, great event. Um, it's it's uh, 
uh, designed to allow people to come out and, and utilize the streets on their bikes and, and as pedestrians and on skates and skateboards. The concept is the same as Ciclovia, which was uh, started in Bogota, Colombia, and uh, it's a phenomena that has kind of caught fire and they're doing it all over the world. And in the city of LA, there's Ciclovia, uh, and that, that is pretty popular. People in Long Beach love Long Beach. They know that we're not Orange County and we're not Los Angeles. We're something very different, right? We like to put our own brand on things. So Beach Streets is our own brand to the Ciclavia Open Streets concept. Uh, MTA gave Long Beach a $250,000 grant to put this on. This event goes through three council districts, seven, eight, and nine. I actually worked on the South Los Angeles Ciclavia, and that's kind of how they brought me on board here. But to be able to do an event where I can walk to, was absolutely phenomenal and it kind of forced me to get to know my neighbors a lot better than I than I did get to know where the talent is where the artists are um, who are the local businesses so it was a great push for me as well as um, being able to just bring in people for the stage and and to vend and to get to know others in the community I want our community members to say we did something great for the community it was free it was something new and the opportunity to be able to walk ride skate down one of our busiest streets and to just see the community happy. I want to see this all filled up later on with bicycles and skateboards and just people. When people can see their own community, their own streets and their own sidewalks, more than just a means to an end, uh, but really see it as a space for us to engage and build community, that's why we have open street events. So I would imagine that uh, a North Long Beach resident if they have a great experience, they're going to say, hey, when's our next Beach Streets? And hopefully we can tell them when our next Beach Streets will be. That was a special event, and we enjoyed being there. Uh, we had some of our staff out there uh, getting video, as you saw, and we actually got a chance to talk with you that day and you were just all over the place uh, with the walkie and you were you know making things happen what was your role in making that all come together well I'm thankful that um, Councilman Al Austin District 8 Councilman Al Austin's office brought me on board to help with that event and I was one of the programmers and I did community and business outreach so programming as far as I had a mile area to do events and I had a stage and just to get the businesses and the community engaged. Now when you think about look, reflecting because it's always good to hindsight, uh, what were some of the challenges that you faced in, in making it be the success that it was? Challenges, let's see, I don't usually focus on those challenges <laughs> but if there was a challenge it was um, the people that didn't know, right. you know, and we made extensive efforts to you know and I I know that when we were trying to explain mm -hmm. what it was people mm -hmm. didn't grasp the concept mm -hmm. of what it was and so I would say you know when's the last time you walked down Atlantic Avenue with right. no cars when's the last time you rode your bike when's the last time you saw and so that was probably one of the challenges mm -hmm. trying to explain to people what it was but those that did participate and came they wow so we hope to get it again so naturally then, when you talk about challenges, we have to talk about successes. Yes. And when you reflect on that, what are you proudest of? I'm proudest that I got to meet a lot of new neighbors. I got to meet and speak with a lot of businesses uh, in uptown Long Beach. And working with District 7, 8, and 9 mm -hmm. um, was absolutely incredible. And um, mm -hmm. just bringing the talent out, just knowing that I do a lot of work in other cities, but being able to walk to an event that I was able to help coordinate and plan was amazing. I, I like doing things in my community. And we had sponsors, right? I mean, you had other corporate sponsors. I think was Metro involved, yes. I believe, Metro. and others. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Now, do we see, with that success of, of this year's event, do we see possibly that happening again in the future? Well, <laughs> if we make phone calls and ask and try and okay. get it again, that's the hope that we get it again and get to do it next year and make it even bigger and better through the trials and the errors and, you know, mm -hmm. um, the difficulties that were minor. I mm -hmm. know what I would do differently um, and working with the city and um, special mm -hmm. events department with Tasha Day and, and Jay Lopez, who are amazing. Um, mm -hmm. We hope that we can get that again. Now, I know that uh, after hearing about what was going to happen in Long Beach, 
it sort of got my attention to be aware when I would hear other things. So this isn't the only event like this in the LA County area, correct? No, and that's kind of how I got on board. I was asked to program um, the South Los Angeles event, which was in de December okay. 2014. So I programmed um, the Lamert Park area with a bunch of, um, in Los Angeles, with a bunch right. of um, different businesses and particularly Chaos Network out of um, mm -hmm. Los Angeles. And I ran into um, a, a member of Councilman Austin's district, a right. member of his staff. And okay. they said, oh, you're working? I said, yeah, this is my area. And so right. when it came time for this, they remember that I go. live there, yeah. I do this, so yeah. yeah. So we have that one now, were there, uh, was there one in the Valley? And, well, uh, Sicilia is, okay. um, is a nonprofit organization now that right. has received funding, millions of dollars, to plan these open streets events throughout Los Angeles County. I believe two weeks ago they had one in Culver City. Right. They've okay. done Venice, they've done Pasadena, okay. um, the South Los Angeles, so they're everywhere. So this is a trend that's not going away. It's, it's going not. to see more up. In fact, we had on a previous uh, show uh, the Molina family, uh, mm -hmm. John and Michelle specifically, and she's a big bicycle advocate and talked about how uh, if they build a building, they wouldn't even want to have parking spaces yeah. because they want to see people ride bikes. And, right. and uh, I think the other derivative was uh, in thinking about uh, beach streets that you're right, people were out there talking to neighbors and talking mm -hmm. to each other in ways that maybe they hadn't done uh, right. before. Uh, we're almost out of time, it went by so fast. Wow. But when you think about community involvement, what would you say to the people who are listening about getting involved if they hear this coming up again in Long Beach? Um, if they hear this coming up again in Long Beach, I'd just say call your local council district and, and, and jump on board. That's just one of the best ways. And um, I have to also say we have to thank the Molina family because we were thinking about how we can get people from outside the Long Beach or in the Long Beach area mm -hmm. to the event that may not live directly off um, mm -hmm. Atlantic and they donated their shuttle to, oh, wow. yeah, so, and that was just wow. a couple phone calls and they yeah. said, it was on them. The whole so, community just came together yes, and made it, it happen. Yes, it really did. Right. Yes. Well, it did. Uh, it was a great success because of corporations like the Molinas, but also because of special people like yourself mm -hmm. volunteering and, and making things happen in our community. And I'm really proud of what you do. I know your work and uh, really appreciate your work as well. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. And we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we will be meeting with local musician, Lisa Spikers. You won't want to miss this. Stay tuned for more Long Beach Wins. Hi, I'm Derek Simpson, Executive Director of the Long Beach Community Action Partnership here at the WeLab satellite location. Had net with them being the media company that they are, with the entrepreneurs that we have that can use such innovations, you know, to better their business. And I think also the vision that WeLabs is being given by PadNet with their advertising and then vice versa. I think it's very important for the two of us to be here together. So one thing PadNet offers is for us to make it what we want it to be. It's our voice, it's our channel. And this gives another whole group of people that may not have gone down to the library, that may not have gone all the way up to North Long Beach to be part of, of creation at the site, of using the studios. They'll come here. You have the ability to, to come here and check out um, a field kit, a, a DSLR camera, lights, um, audio kit, everything that you need to uh, produce the content to create a program for PadNet. I have freelancers, contractors coming in, and I am building my business here. It has really made a difference between building my business from a home environment and building my business here in a professional environment that is very creative and collaborative and networking. We love We Labs. We couldn't have done it without it. I'm a part of Long Beach Tech, and we would really love to have more people involve themselves in the daily and weekly, monthly opportunities that present themselves at both We Labs 
PadNet. The people and the energy here, there's so much uh, technological knowledge, there's so much entrepreneurial spirit here, and it's a perfect fit. And we're really excited about all the possibilities um, that this satellite is going to bring. Back to Long Beach Lens. I'm your host, Derek J. Simpson, and our next guest is someone that I happen to be walking down the streets in Belmont Shore, and I heard this amazing voice, and I was like, wow, who is that? And I had to stop and listen for a while, and as it was, it was Lisa Spikers. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you very much. So when we talk about uh, who you are and how you got here, it's, it's quite an amazing journey. And as I did a little research on your website, uh, you started out your career uh, being from Australia and actually being a classically trained musician. Say a little bit about that and how it all evolved. Um, yeah, I, I started um, classical piano lessons at the age of seven or eight, not on the cusp. Right. Um, and uh, it was something I really loved to do and I worked really hard at it, so I ended up um, going to university and pursuing that. Um, but towards the end of the course, I just, I wasn't, wasn't quite there with it. You know, I wasn't enjoying it as much as I, I thought I would. So I decided to, to go into teaching and that's what I did for a very long time um, until um, uh, almost two years ago. Okay. Now, uh, teaching, I mean, there was a lot of discipline with the kids and discipline with you. Being a musician, you have to be disciplined anyway. A lot of reading and and I, I have to say as the glasses are beautiful but you're you're going through a little medical challenge right now which is why the glasses are on yes yeah, so i'm very i'm very sensitive to light right now as i've just had uh, my lasik eye surgery um because it was much cheaper for me to do it in this country so <laughs> right. i did that yesterday uh otherwise right. i wouldn't be wearing glasses you'd be able to see my eyes right. um <laughs> but um you know and I bring that up because it's a journey for you, as you said. It's, a, it's not just a physical journey, journey from point A to point B. It's actually a, a personal journey of, of pursuing a dream. And, and that's something that's very important to you, right? Yeah. I, um, I, I guess when I started this, I wasn't really sure where I was going with it. I thought, oh, I'm just going to go to the U.S. And, um, and just see how it goes, you know. Um, I had planned on staying here a lot longer because I was in a relationship, which is why I came here initially. Um, but I, uh, as, as it developed, I decided, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to travel with this music, and not just travel. I'm going to write music. I'm going to meet new people along the way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have, you know, crazy experiences as I, as I travel around the U.S. and then. Uh, later on um, through Asia as well. So that's that's what I've been doing over the past 18 months, uh, splitting my time between the US and Malaysia in particular. And I read also that you actually at one point traveled to 10 countries in Africa and wrote 10 songs. What was that about? Uh, yeah, that was, that was the trip um, I think that changed my life. Really? Um, because before that, I was playing music, um, uh, like blues and stuff like that, that wasn't classical, because I would sort of went from classical to, to learning how to play blues and covers and stuff like that, but I wasn't writing my own music. Went to Africa on my own, uh, backpacked through, you know, um, through the south part, through the west part, through 
the east part. I went to all kinds of countries like Ethiopia, Rwanda, Mali, Ghana, uh, Swaziland by myself. Oh, wow. And it was really tough. It was yeah, really, yeah. really tough because I was doing it on the cheap as well. I was on local buses, language barriers, all kinds of things. And when I came back um, three and a half, four months later, the songs just came out. And I thought, oh, I can write songs. Great. Yeah. And that, that was the next part of my, my development as a musician. And I, I read as well that you uh, went back to Australia after one of these journeys. I think it was from the U.S. And someone that was a mentor, uh, you opened your mouth and it said it came out like blues, soul, and, and roots all, all together. And when we look at you, I was joking with you before, I don't see blues and soul. But how did you uh, associate yourself? How, what was your a passion for that? That genre. I, I think at the time when I was doing that, my transition from um, the classical world into, mm -hmm. uh, you know, something else that wasn't classical, right. I was listening to a lot of jazz at that point. So jazz was actually my first thing, like jazz mm -hmm. standards. I was doing a lot of the Ella Fitzgerald, Nina Simone, Billie Holiday, all that kind of stuff. Wow. I was listening to a Real lot of classics, that stuff. Yeah. yeah, the classic stuff. And I loved it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that inspired me to go to the States. And, um, and I, saw, I mainly saw jazz, but I, I, I saw a little bit of blues too, especially when I was in Chicago. Yeah. And, yeah. And I thought, oh, I really like this. <laughs> this is really cool. So when I got back and I started playing it, I started singing that kind of stuff. Right. And um, yeah, and my teacher at the time um, was the one who encouraged me. And he mm. was, he's a very well-respected musician in Australia. Mm. Um, and so I, um, I was confident enough to give it a go. Right. Yeah. We only have a few minutes before we're going to actually be treated with a, a, a performance from you, but what would you say to young artists, knowing the journey that you've had as a musician, for young artists that might be looking on, you know, we have music here and there are other teens that come through, what would be your advice to them in terms of pursuing their dreams in music? I, well, from my experience, I feel that you need to be patient Patience is a big thing and that every little thing happens for a reason. So, you know, sometimes I, I, I've got into this, this mindset of, oh, I wish that I did this a little earlier, you know, because I'm in my, in my late 30s now. But it all happens for a reason. So the classical training, you know, going into, you know, my um, playing covers and blues and jazz covers, going into songwriting, it all, it's a progression. and. And I do believe that it's only ever going to just go like this. Right. And so I, um, I think patience, well, this is, I've got a tattoo on my back that says this in, in some way. Patience is the key to success, mm. you know, working steadily and, and you will get there. Right. You know. So Lisa, we're going to be treated with a, a song from you. What is the name of the song you'll share? Uh, the song is called If the Sky Should Ever Fall On You. Or well, the abridged title is just if the sky. Great. If the sky. Well, when we hear this, we're going to end the show with a performance by Lisa with If the Sky. But before we wrap up, I'd like to thank our viewers for tuning in. Thanks to our guests, Lisa Spikers and Tasha Hunter, who was here earlier, for coming on the show. Be sure to follow PadNet TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest updates. This show has been brought to you with the support from Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Thank you for watching Long Beach Lens. And now we present to you a performance by Miss Lisa Spikers. sky should ever fall on you no I wouldn't no I wouldn't be blue you may think I'm being cruel heartless and bad but I'm talking to you in 
way that you'd understand Cause you did me wrong More times than I can recall With your howling and your cursing me And making no sense at all If the sky should ever fall on you No, I wouldn't No, I wouldn't be blue I can't wish you The best as we part Cause I'm left here Hold my broken heart And I'm so glad I'll never see you again Cause I'm moving on I finally broke your awful chain Oh, I would.